Uh, speaking of Skynet and speaking of, of uh, computers going crazy, or at least things not working the way we wanted to, let's talk a little bit about Amazon Kindle delisting light novels and manga. Uh, there's been a lot of a, a lot of uh, buzz and talk about uh, content uh, censoring mm -hmm. in uh, social media platforms like Facebook. And when I saw that news piece, the first thought that ran through my head is, oh, crap, not Kindle, please. Mm. I, you know, can you just let us actively as adults, you know, buy things which are legal? Um, and then we can, you know, we'll, we'll police ourselves in that respect. I mean, obviously yeah. nothing that's grossly against any kind of international conventions, mm. etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, you guys don't need to go and... and and wipe out stuff that's 18 plus mm -hmm. if you get people to confirm they're 18 plus you know what I mean well it's like, you know. and here's the other weird thing we were talking about this a little bit before um, there's plenty of 18 plus stuff on Amazon like if you start skimming through all the light oh, novels and manga yeah. on there ho 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 you know you'll find stuff a lot worse than a rainbow well Amazon you know there there's an entire business sphere that generates a, a, a generally large amount of income, and Amazon fully, completely, and totally ascribes to that that commerce channel, mm -hmm. and will sell you Indeed. anything from anywhere across the world that is prurient interest to adults 18 plus. Mm -hmm. Why in the living hoo ha would Kindle like knock some stuff out that has questionable content but is not explicit? So here's and what I suspect. Not against international conventions. Here's what I suspect. It's like I said in the news. I think it triggered a bot. Some script ran to look for objectionable con content, and there was some combination of things in there that was enough to trigger, you know, 15 year old plus this plus that plus that, and they're like, oh nope, nope, it's 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 got to go. Um, what I'd be curious to find out is if this is happening to anyone else. Like, is this you know, are other authors seeing this happen? And uh, manga and light novels just happen to be caught up in this? Um, or not? I don't know. I was going to say, Era Manga Sensei and, and Oriemo. Yeah, okay, I can see how the bot picks that up. But what remind me what part of No Game, No Life fits in the same kind of category as mm. Oriemo and, you know what I mean? Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. Well, and that was the other interesting thing, is that um, uh, Amazon reached out to them about No Game, No Life and said that that doesn't follow under, under uh, uh, guidelines. It was, um, let me just double check here. Um, um, Aramanga and Oriemo. Yeah, so Oriemo and Aramanga have disappeared, or volumes of it have disappeared um, with no explanation. Well, yeah, well, you can imagine what the explanation yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, w would be if you could fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. so. I don't know. Sometimes I... um, it, it, it could be, I mean, just, you know, like in the library, sometimes some people find the weirdest things. And, uh, you know, when you sit there and you're at a library and someone says, yeah, we're going to ban, play wants to ban Harry Potter. And you just go, it's Harry Potter. How, how, why would you <laughs> ban that? And then... You come to realize that there's a you know some woman, Karen, mother, father, authority figure, whatever, however you want to put it, out there who said who found who found issue with it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the you know uh, uh, no play no no game no life um, falls in that category of like why would you want to get rid of this? But if you were say someone who firmly believed that uh, video games were resulting uh, of violence mm -hmm. uh, or you know caused violence. Uh, you could take that to another to another level. I mean, it's kind of a stretch, honestly. Sure. But, you know, there 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 are people out there who do, unfortunately, and worked in the library think that way, where they're just kind of like, well, I don't want my child to see this, which is actually fine, and, and actually shows that you're a parent who gives a, a, a darn about your kid. Mm -hmm. but you know what? Don't put it onto other kids. <laughs> and, yeah, but I mean, this, you know, this is one of those things uh, that run it back to when we were all children right. that catcher in the rye right. caught a lot of crap mm -hmm. 
of mice and men con crap. I mean, these are classic works of literature. Mm -hmm. And you know, you had the naysayers that said, no, they, they they shouldn't be in a library. You know, these are these are things that will give terrible ideas. Okay. There are limits to what you can what you can you know display. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I totally fully understand that legally. Yeah. I, again, international conventions with regards to human trafficking, child pornography, etc. All of this, you know, they're well documented things. But there are controversial ideas that are presented in uh, some context and formats that some object to, but you know what? You can't live in a cave. Mm. Oh, you can't. You can't. You know I, mean, I mean, well, but, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. You can't You can't live in a cave because I was actually just thinking about when they tried to uh, cancel out of the Pratt Library Captain Underpants. And, mm. um, you know, why would you do that? And there's, there's unfortunately, there's just that, that, that person who does want to live in a cave. So th that is an interesting take, though. I hadn't even thought about that. that I wonder if there were complaints. I wonder if folks reached out to Amazon to say, hey, you know, um, this shouldn't be on here. Um, and I mean, obviously, Amazon has a, a kind of has both track records. You know, Amazon <laughs> is famous for kind of allowing everything, like the comments on their stuff. They say, we don't censor comments. If you want to post whatever crazy comments you want, as long as it's not defamatory, you know, we, we love Three Wolf Moon and you know, 2% Milk and all those all those crazy stories of all the weird comments on those. Um, whatever you want to sell on here, again, as long as it's not human organs. Um, but then there was also the Brave New World story. Right. So it's tough. Um, and the reason I ran off screen is because I wanted to, to bring up something that actually was a news story some years back. Um, this book, um, manga... 60 years of Japanese comics. Oh, yes. This was the subject of a, of a big censorship thing um, because yeah. someone came into a library and was, and their, you know, eight year old or whatever had found it. And th what's funny about the story is that they basically took it up and it was on the shelves and they took it up to the librarian and said, I, I think this should be, like, still carry it, but not on the shelves. Like, make it something that folks have to ask for. Um, and the librarian complied, and that became a huge censorship news story. Now, when that came out, I happened to have a copy of that. I cannot show you the the pages, but there are absolutely pages in here. Yeah. They're all about age comics. They're all about you know gore and violence and all this stuff, and it's right there in the pages. So I remember seeing that, and thinking, actually, yeah, like I don't, like I can totally understand somebody saying, you know. Still carry it, but maybe not where random eight year olds can can pull it out and go, Oh, you know. Um so I think that is an interesting but balance. This, but this is always this this comes down to you know the the eternal slippery slope. Mm. You know, it's like is that something that you remove and, and wait for people to inquire about, or is that mm -hmm. something that you you specifically set in a young adult or an adult section? that and i don't mean adult as an adult adult necessarily mm -hmm. but i mean something that is it's, it's got fun. content that is not appropriate for an eight-year-old mm -hmm. oh, um, to... rather than just you know what i mean sort of make it go away mm. be because then you know it, it it makes me um what is the um sox the the anime where they deal with the world where oh it is. yeah um shimonetta, um, shimonetta. Um, you, you, you know, you, you want to make sure that things stay in appropriate places and mm -hmm. ways that people can encounter them. But at the same time, you don't want to dumb down the entire experience so that by the time you're like 25, you're like, oh, you know, people have things under clothing. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I mean, it's. Eh, it's yeah, to your things. point. To your point, um, Brent, I think I told you a story before mm -hmm. about the Ghost of the Shell manga that I, that I bought. Mm -hmm. So the library usually get rid of their books by, um, by selling them, their, their surplus books and stuff. So they have these little book sales where you can buy the stuff for like, you know, a buck or two. And um, the libraries often, you know, they have multiple copies of mangas, which is actually something that if you're a manga reader and you want a really cheap manga, uh, go to public library book sales. You'll see, mm -hmm. you'll find all sorts of stuff. Um, so anyway, I got there and I found um, a 
a, a the manga of Ghost in the Shell like a like a really um, older, almost original print of of um, of you know the original work, and it was beautiful work. And I got it, and you know, took it home, and I was nonplussed to see that it was all in Japanese. So it was just like I have to look at the pretty pictures, but we <laughs> couldn't really read it. But, it, but the slow the translation point, process, translation, right? Um, but to your point, JJ, of of having things in the right place, this was in with the regular Dragon Ball, with uh, Dragon Ball mm. Z. It was with One Piece and stuff like that. And when I and now, if you know Ghost in the Shell in the manga, you know that he's the. Uh, it's very it's very sexualized, and mm. there's a portion in that book when you open it up, where it talks about. Um, same sex, well, theoretically, same sex um, uh, love scene in that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you're if you're a parent, and you know a kid, or you know, picks it up, a kid picks it up and goes, "Hey, what's this? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. I don't get it." You know, that can be that can be something for a, a, a you know a little bit of a uh, problem for the parent. But there is a misunderstanding, and maybe and maybe this is translating over the Kindle. They're not really understanding what it is that they're that they're presenting, what they're putting mm, out there, and maybe right. maybe somebody complained about it, and maybe they just need to readjust and just put the, you know, put the S eighteen warning on. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. Call I mean, it what it is. Yeah, there's a lot of manga that came out that didn't have any, you know, um, um, age restrictions back in the day. Um, it was like, oh, well, I'm on half. It must, you know, that that must be cute. Um, and then it's like, oh, maybe maybe we should we should put a, like a you know, thirteen uh, yeah. plus, fifteen plus, whatever. Well, but I mean, the, the knee jerk reaction to to something that's out of context mm-hmm. is um, a little too quick, mm-hmm. uh, at yeah. least in my opinion. I, I, and again, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I I hate being of the ilk where it's like, oh, I could, you know, when I was ten, I could play outside after dark <laughs> and nobody cared. No. I ate lead paint. Right. Yeah, paint. I, I was just fine. <laughs> um, but, you know what I mean? There's a lot to be said for the fact that you still have um, some generational cultural misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. So somebody, okay. yeah, you know I what I mean? You. Somebody who has, uh, for lack of a better a term, weaned them themselves off of Naruto and moved on to Death Note. You know, or still, you know, not ween necessarily, but um, mm-hmm. you know, their entrepont is is Naruto. They they got into this with Naruto or with Pokemon or with something, and they've moved on and they're progressing. And you could be, you know, given the the opportunity to to enter in a very young age, you know, you could be moving on by the time you're like twelve mm-hmm. into much more, okay. you know, interesting and in depth kind of content and controversial content. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of the idea of being like, let's dial back what people can get access to, it's, I think, a fundamental misunderstanding yeah. on the part of the parents that mm-hmm. it's like, you want to think that your your precious little 10 or 12-year-old is, like, one, that they mm-hmm. need their diaper changed. The, the <laughs> access to information and media through things like, I don't know, this magical little cube thing that I carry around all the time is so devastatingly amazing that you cannot presume necessarily age appropriate content matches that age. Mm. That's something, you know what I mean, that you have to look at on a case by case basis. So just going off and being like, you know, my little kid who's 12 years old mm. who can get Ghost in a Shell. Mm-hmm. Who can right. watch Death Note and like understand what's going on. Mm. Not just be like, oh, that's a neat thing. Oh, look at that thing walking around. You know what I mean? They they get the concept of it, and mm. they are ingesting that, and they, they can, you know, fully experience it. Mm-hmm. These people just the knee jerk, re- yeah, knee jerk reaction. Yeah, the be like, oh. and, and the foundations for today's kids are, is much more uh, yeah. deeper than than it was for me or the parents, <sighs> and and so you know, for what my parents would be. You, know, you, you were just playing Astro Boy in the background there, uh, Brent. And um, it, it's, you know, that's something that would be, oh, hey, this is what I grew up with. And mm. you're saying kid is going to have a far better understanding of, well, mm. oh, that's a shimigami. He's a god of death. Mm. So right. he's related to this. And I get that. There might be some gaps in the mm. knowledge, the fundamental, you know, foundation of understanding 
is a book that that hurt, that kills people. This is the guy who owns the book, but mm. he's playing a game with this other guy. And they'll get that part of it. You're right. You, right. So because, like... because, because because kids, you know, you know, this is one of the things I I feel bad about my older sister. She had two boys. You know, I didn't have cell phones. My 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 nephews. You know, I mean, that's I mean, it's mm. just instant. It, it's it's so yeah. they have they grow up. I guess they grow up a little bit more quickly. Yeah. Than, yeah. than they did then. And I guess that's the that's the problem so the is that, you know, back back when we were kids, um, back when you all were kids, um, you, the difficult back one, when dinosaurs ruled the land. Well, that's the thing. And the is great that, sun god in the sky. No. Time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Kids today can stumble across, you know, my lover is a, T a Tyrannosaurus Rex, um, romance novels. Um, but you it's know. not even stumble across, Brent. But you know, my, my nieces are right in the sort of the demographic mm. that you would say that you don't really want. You know, they're they're twelve and mm. fourteen. Mm. They don't stumble across very much. Mm. Right? They follow the breadcrumb trail. Because of their innate it's curiosity there. on certain right. subject matter. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And so it, mm, you can't really, you know, and I, I, I get how Amazon wants to, you know, dial things back. And they want the Kindle to limit liability. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Mike, you, you're, all you're going to do is just shift how you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go, that breadcrumb trail is going to follow off to a third party provider who is doing this who hasn't gotten caught by the piracy police. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, that's, that's or, how it's going to go. Or we could get the kids of today to read the uh, original Hans Christian Andersen stories. Well, yeah. Mm. The original watched, Brothers uh, Grimm stories. Mm, how about those? Yeah. 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 I, I just watched The Little Mermaid, uh, the anime, uh, again for, for the first time in years the other night. And that that's, you know, it's not Disney. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Disney in the least. Yeah. Um so well if you if you read briar rose oh you know what i mean it's like that's not a that's not how disney did that no well no. And, no. you know and yeah, the old fairy tales had very different purposes than oh, yeah. disney <laughs> right, right. We're telling very different stories speaking of telling different stories uh and speaking also of online um let's talk a bit about barefoot again yay Hang on, I need a fortification. <laughs> so this is the abridged version where the where the the plane flies away and there's no bomb dropped and right. they live a happy life ever after, right? Exactly. Um, oh, and, and no one has any side no. effects, yeah. no cancer. Well, no, no the no, plane the plane no flies away and they decide that this is not what should be done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, the abridged version. So for those curious, Barefoot again, <laughs> um, uh, manga about the um, a, a young boy who lives in Hiroshima, Japan, in 1945. Um, so the news story this week is that uh, to mark the 75th, 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima, um, there is going to be a, an English version of uh, Barefoot Gen uh, released on uh, the Mainichi newspaper's website, a uh, new chapter every day, basically. Uh, apparently this is already, this had already, this is basically a, an adaptation that had already been done. So there was some abridged version of the English version of the manga that they had, they had made, and now they are re-releasing that for free. Uh, it'll be available through August. Um, do you think? Do you think anybody's going to read this who would not have read *Fair for Again* otherwise? I think only if you had a a teacher who would actually use this as a tool. Mm -hmm, yeah, uh, if a teacher were to use this as a tool. I think it would be useful as an abridged version. Um, the theater I work for, we we did uh, we did Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth for um, you know seventh and sixth grade, sixth and seventh graders. So it was definitely an abridged version of it, but it's still a, a useful tool, um, not just historically, but you know, the the all important message of you know just how awful this is, mm -hmm. and it's not just about going off it's you know what happens afterwards mm -hmm. right. i think it's a good tool but i think in terms of of just throwing it out there and will someone some some person just go oh barefoot again and and pick it up and read it i i don't know i i, I i'm kind of leaning towards the fact that unless there's someone that's really into manga to begin with 
um pretty much anyone who's who's who enjoys this anime and and stuff will, will will have some knowledge of the name of it even if they haven't read it so maybe it would induce them to read it well that's I the thing. I, I, I think you're right i think yeah. this would be a great teaching tool mm -hmm. because yeah. an abridged version it it, it 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 wouldn't do as 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 well to deliver the the startling impact uh, as right. you would by doing going through the original. So I think mm -hmm. yes, as a, as a teaching tool, as a as a as well, I, mean, I suppose as a means of getting you into like actually looking at the manga, getting mm -hmm. to look at the anime, that that right. might be a great sort of way to get that in there. Is yeah. that here's like a, a a sort of primer on it, and now you've been primed on it, you understand the the, the highlight parts of it, and now at your leisure. By your interest, you can then go and delve deeper into it. Yeah, I, you I can, can do a deep dive. Yeah, I, I can see fans who've heard of Barefoot Gen, but haven't come across it yet. Just haven't gotten that, you know, gotten to, gotten there yet. Yeah, um, we'll it's be like, kind of oh, like, okay. like grave of the of the fireflies. Is mm -hmm. you know everyone knows about it, but until you actually see it, and or if you watch this yeah. channel and watch Brent do a, a panel discussion on it, and just go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, time, time to take a swig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and and that's the thing. It's like that. It's always um, it's always hard to appreciate since you know our, our intersection with those things mm -hmm. has happened at some time in the past. It's always hard to appreciate how going forward with somebody who is sixteen, seventeen mm -hmm. years old, fifteen, mm -hmm. fourteen years old. Yeah that they you know what i mean they their means of getting into something that's that heavy mm -hmm. there isn't a cold war anymore mm -hmm. the sort of saber rattling that you get out of north korea is consistent and yet not so world ending yeah yeah it doesn't feel real. Um, right so that you know former you know cold war warriors it's like wow you know grave of the fireflies and barefoot again those are things that are like, wow, you know, this is this was a potentiality mm -hmm. um, that was daily, I, if not monthly. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. like now people who are younger intersecting that I would imagine that things like economic, you know, disenfranchisement and mm -hmm. other, uh, you know, more more personally social and closely social mm -hmm. issues are more of a touchstone for them than the concept of massive war and nuclear annihilation well and barefoot right. gen's also notable because it's it's the actually the only piece of media i can think of that um actually the oh, one of two uh that treats the bombing of hiroshima three um without sensationalizing it right yeah. like every other version right. i've seen it is some big apocalyptic thing that's going to happen and we got to save the world um barefoot gun and actually it's in this corner of the world and in the um, world, yeah, I was about to say, and um, a ton of uh, uh, yeah, a quiet town, a country of cherry blossoms, or eh, whatever that is. Um, the, uh, the the manga by the same person who okay, conceived the book the you let me, yes, that one, yeah, okay. um, the town of the evening, yeah, Calm, this, in, this, blossoms, I think. in this corner of the world, was yeah, 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 yeah. same uh, author, yeah. um, but anyway, um. Uh, you know, it, it is it, it is a fact. It is a factual event that occurred that we are documenting in those yeah. works. Um, Which heaven mm -hmm. knows in in those you do not need to really over like play <laughs> what happened. I mean, it, it's uh, just horrible what happened. Ooh. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I mean, it, it, the thing speaks for itself. It's just, it, yeah, it's it's just, it gives you an idea of just, you know, it's not just the bomb, people die. Oh, there's some arbitrary thought of you die of cancer. And they this shows you people dying of cancer and mm. shows you how quickly, and, yeah. you know, we, we, we how, how we look at it. And then it also, the, the same dimension at the same time, you have all these impromptu government courts and commissions mm. that so corrupt or so inept or so unable yeah. to do anything this catastrophe that that no one else in the world has dealt with before or since yeah. I, mean, I mean well and also the idea of like this is not just made up you know uh what yeah. happens if the nukes fly and and, 
and you know Washington D.C. blows up. No, this this happened. Yeah. These are results of what happened and people and it's the result of people not fully understanding mm-hmm. what was happening yeah. at the same time. Well, it's also the the honesty of yeah. not only the the inhumanity of the experience, but also a lot of the inhumanity of people in the experience. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if you think of Grave of the Fireflies, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The callous disregard for other human lives you, you, really, not you literally the, the people who the do the screen this. and go yeah <laughs> i mean not the people yeah. that are dropping the bombs and mm-hmm. flying away and being like that's inhuman oh. but the people who are on the ground you know um having just finished japan sinks 2020 you know disasters bring out the best in humanity and the worst mm-hmm. in humanity mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a, a, a man-made disaster. It can be a natural disaster. And mm-hmm. man's inhumanity to man mm-hmm. becomes a naked and, and damn uncomfortable and unbearable thing to watch sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Including disasters like, say, Godzilla. Right? <laughs> because we have it in the blue You know it's I'm cute as hell. <laughs> Thing of the Blue Oyster Cult song Godzilla, where the line goes, "Oh no, there goes Tokyo, go go Godzilla." Oh no, here comes Tokyo, here comes Godzilla. Uh, so, and that's a good song. Yeah. That's right, right. So we got news this week um, because there's there's no good way of transitioning out of Barefoot again about uh, yeah. Chibi Godzilla. Um, there's a new Chibi Godzilla anime series. Um, it is about Chibi Godzilla, Chibi Rodan, Chibi Ghidorah, and Mothra. Chibi Mothra, of course, um, who all live with an office worker named Satomi, because why not? <laughs> um, actually, no, is I think Chibi Mothra it, 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 like it, like the size of like an actual moth, like a giant moth. Like well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, about this. Yeah, so yeah, it's about yeah. Uh, um, uh, oh, actually, be beautiful. And actually, I, oh, I, I, I should say... Put that Kindle down. You know, you're not <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no Aramanga Sensei for you. Um, <laughs> so, um, so apparently the character debuted in a picture book um, uh, back in 2018. And here's my question. Um, do you think, like, Chibi Godzilla is a thing that can work. Like, is is that a an effective avenue for merchandising Godzilla, or does it seem like it's you know going a bit too far with that franchise? Don't you remember the '80s cartoon with Godzilla and Godzilla? Oh God, I do. Do you not recall <laughs> this? Crappy this was a I thing do. that was made and merchandised. I, I well, I, I I remember, and that's why I'm asking oh the question. Oh my God, I've never heard that. The Scrappy Doo of Kaiju. Do oh. oh. Oh, that's good. That is that's wicked. Brilliant. That is actually true. <laughs> you got it. Um, um, and that was the thing is that I don't recall that doing very well. No, but it did. It did a um, thing. Mm-hmm. It was on TV. It ran its whatever season. I don't think it ran two seasons, mm-hmm. but it ran its its American cartoon season, and then passed off into history. So it was enough to get funding enough to get sponsorship to happen it was a hanna barbera cartoon i'm double checking right now um it had two seasons thank you very much oh see <laughs> now see there you go will 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 chibi godzilla make it oh hell yeah mm-hmm. um at, at least two seasons it, it, there we go um it looks like there were yeah total of 26 episodes two 13 episode series um hanna barbera production i'm scrolling through now um Okay, Let's so it was Hanna Barbera. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it was definitely Hanna Barbera. So, um, so yes, I, I think it, depending on how it looks, I would imagine you're going to end up with a fairly uh, decent selling uh, plushy line. Mm-hmm. Uh, you probably won't have too many figures necessarily because it would it would be too cutesy. But you're going to have a lot of keychains. You're going to have a lot of like. You may yeah. even have like a, a series of T-shirts, etc., mm-hmm. for Chibi Godzilla, Chibi Mothra. It's going to be a cute little whatever. Uh, yeah, it, it's going to uh, appeal to the Kawaii set, mm-hmm. and they're going to snap it up. What I would like to see, though, 
is the transition of Chibi Godzilla when he hit his teen years <laughs> and decided to become the <laughs> pimply, pimply Godzilla. Godzilla Shonen. Pimply I angry, need to very, see this. Very, very angry Godzilla. Mm -hmm. He was turned down for prom. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that Godzilla. Yep. Bad teeth. What, what happened when he was on Life IQ? Right. <laughs> and and how did where was the falling out with Rodan? Yes. Well, see, that's that's going to be where that like you just like insert Godzilla in the squid billies. <laughs> so you get you get the 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 pimply angry get your hands off the trail. <laughs> you know that that's how that works right there. You can just segue that right in. Perfect. Um, so yeah, so Chibi Godzilla works, and also we had another. Odd crossover of franchises this week. Gundam meets business. I just how Gosh. how do you what, you know why? I mean, at, at, know, at, at some point well, in time, they're going to be the people young enough to have grown up entirely on Gundam and, and you know, oh, other things, I mean, po Pokemon, Naruto, etc. They're going, they're go, they're adults and they're doing things. So that's that a forty-year-old franchise. Yeah, I mean, it'll be familiar to them, mm -hmm. but why? Well, it's it's kind of like it's well, you know, you have to incorporate uh, morale boosting by slapping. <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, slapping on morale, right? it just, true, you know, true. You know, mm -hmm. you will be happy. You will you will do better. You will meet your goal. <laughs> oh, there you go. Stop um, complaining. But, <laughs> but, but the, right, stop, stop complaining. You're, you're, you work hourly. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Um. But as I was saying earlier, there's. Uh, this isn't the first time I've seen something like this. This is, um, like I said, Crimson Tide actually has um, a lot of people who who work in retail. Uh, there's a scene in Crimson Tide where they uh, tie it into a book called The One Minute, where Denzel Washington talks about uh, the Silver Surfer. You know how the two guys are, are fighting in, in the alley right. of the sub, and it's over Kirby's surf, uh, Silver Surfer, Moise's Silver, uh, Silver Surfer. It's how Denzel Washington went in and said, "This is what you're doing wrong." You know, you're a good employee, but you're you're just you're throwing it all away, and reads him out, tells him what he's done is wrong, breaks him down, but builds him back up by saying, "Any idiot knows that it's the Kirby Silver Surfer." <laughs> oh, so, you know, but I can see elements of that. I mean, you know, joking around, you know, you can see like you know, getting ahead by shooting your sister in the face, uh, or not your sister, your uh, your zombie ally in the mm -hmm. face, um, yep. things yes. like that, but. You know, there are, there is when you watch Gundam, there are, and, and incidentally, and Brent does not advocate shooting anybody in the face <laughs> for dispute resolution. Well, just, just HR will have a problem with that. HR will have a problem. Yeah. Um, but no, there is, you know, I, I feel that in Gundam, there are, um, like particularly when you're looking at the zombies and how they, how they operate. If you look at Ramazal. Mm -hmm. Uh, and how he operates and how he gains loyalty and why people are loyal to him and yeah. you know um, especially Rabarol I the people like in you know who how do you manage people how do you get people to do what you want and mm -hmm. that's what management is is you know how do I get my team to be effective and do these things well have you have and, you seen the either the original legend of the galactic heroes or the reboot from a couple of years ago bits and pieces tell the original you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's got a lot yeah. of that management of not only mm -hmm. the micro space, but the macro space and the greater, oh, you know, greater uh, <laughs> management space, space. and yeah, big space, um, <laughs> the greater management issues with regards to directing people and campaigns and tactics right. and strategy. So it's like I just I, I, I find Gundam is obviously the most popular thing to choose to to. You know, that has those elements to, to use it for business. Right. Um, having seen some other things that I would think probably like segue in better, I, mm -hmm. I they're, they're not as popular. So I, I kind of get how about, that. How about, how about sardines and and, and Char and Zabo, actually? Okay. Zabo, uh, actually. Well, I was thinking each um, of so good I, reviewers I, I, and customer service. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, but that's a re that's a retail scape. That's not you know that's true. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily trading company scape. So mm -hmm. I just want to see someone pull oh, the projector. It, it, and, yeah. you, you, there, 
if you go into into your grocery store, you're going to find this this sardine can called Oscars, right? The sardines. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the 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 licensees of uh, license holder of uh, or the people in charge of the licensing of Gundam have in Japan have this tin that had Char Ensemble's face on it, mm-hmm. and said, you know, it's like basically Gundam sardines, mm-hmm. and. Shardines. <laughs> so that, speaking of Amazon, speaking of Shardines. Amazon, sold yeah, out I think Amazon. Brent said that yeah. before. <laughs> Shardines. <laughs> Shardines. Uh. So they, they sold out in like, so I don't know, maybe you got a point that it maybe there may be a popularity issue as, as opposed to actual. Yeah. Well, and you know, I, but I, I think you're, I, I think you're right too. I think you know, when you look at the topics that they list, working styles, that's definitely a thing in Gundam. There are very different personalities in there that all have to mesh. Yeah. Um, human resource development, you know, seeing how those characters evolve over time. Um, professionalism, Amaro, Ray, all the way up. To, yeah. <laughs> um, get some Shinji Akari in there too. Um, vision, you know, um, you know, executing to that thing. We, we got to get this thing done. And actually, vision's kind of interesting because one of the things Gundam gets into is this difference between short-term and long-term thinking that very often the crew of white base is like, why do we have to do this thing? Why are we going from here to here? Why are they giving us all these orders? And it's not until like yeah. three episodes later, there's, oh, it is part of this larger strategy and this needs to be here. That yeah, needs to be long-term there. Long-term strategic goals, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I think it, it, it's one of those things where um, I think obviously it is more that Gundam is a, it's like Star Trek, right? It is, it is a name that has name recognition. Yeah, right. um, but also it, it, it fits enough that it, it doesn't feel like a, a completely ridiculous, um, um, you know, combination of things. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Like you, you can go there. <laughs> I guess. Well, and look at all of the, you know, the manga guide to astrophysics, the manga guide to mathematics, right? Like there, there's right. obviously that, that synergy there. Right. Um, so where was that when I was in high school? I know. I just uh, said Cliff's down. notes. That's all I had. Who is Cliff, by the way? I always <laughs> want to know who that was. You know, obviously somebody who made a fantastic amount of money in the pre-internet days. That's why he was at Cheers all the time. That's why he was at the bar. Yep. Hey, he made all the money off. Of, yeah, that makes sense now. Gotcha. Someone who has never been in my living room. Mm. You ever see that episode? No, I haven't. He, he um he was on Jeopardy with Alex in in. He said uh, they listed three names of the Rat Pack. Uh, and the only answer he could come up with the final Jeopardy was three men who are never been who have never been in my living room. <laughs> That's probably the completely correct answer, though. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, technically can't true. prove not. So. You can't prove it. <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, um, but yeah, that is that is absolutely um, uh, it's absolutely a, a thing that's happening. Um, so we'll see where that's going. Uh, cool. Those were all the news items you want to talk about this week. Is there anything else you guys wanted to bring up? Mm, can't think of anything off, off the top of my head. Oh, uh, the uh, CG Yojimbo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Usagi Yojimbo. Yeah. yeah. Again, as we discussed earlier, all I could imagine is Toshiro Mifune, Seven Samurai, Rashomon, being that being Usagi Yojimbo. Yeah. I mean, that, mm, that you know, would be awesome. It, that would, have, that been would have been amazing, but have been epic. unless anybody's got like a revive crystal or <laughs> or a resurrect crystal, I don't think we're going to be able to get him back for that. Yeah, it's already done deal. No, not anytime. No. Hey, no, I I um talking about you know history and how far things have come. Um, I remember when it came out at the same time as the original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics came out. Same mm-hmm. time, there's actual some limited. Uh, sharing of characters between the two Ooh. series, and and um, uh, for at first it was like descendants of Usagi Gajimbo were interacting with like Leonardo and, and all of the other turtles. Then it got to some of the minor characters, and there were actual storylines that that mm. crossed over. Well, is they, is it, wasn't there a an action figure that was released yes. with the turtles that was a samurai rabbit? Yes, yeah, that, and that, that it was... was a descendant that was. Isado Usagi? I, I don't remember. I just, a, a friend of mine who's. who's there was. Know, there, but there was, yeah. Collected there, that. There, there was. was a samurai rabbit, and like Usagi Yojimbo, he had his ears 
pulled up yep. with yep. a with a little bind yeah, on I, top of them. I think it was Usagi Ujimbo. That was actually my introduction to Usagi Ujimbo was there was an episode of the Turtles anim animated series where they go through a portal into the world of Usagi Ujimbo. Um, and it's a whole yeah. big crossover yep. thing. Cool. Yeah. Um, I just remember seeing that that see figure and, and seeing, you know, Usagi Ujimbo and being like, wait a minute. <laughs> How's that? But yeah, so Netflix is doing a CG uh, series based on Usagi Ujimbo. Um, no news yet on like length, um, number of episodes, all that kind of stuff. Um, will be done by um, 88 Pictures as a CG animation studio, which sounds familiar, and I'm going to actually look that up right now. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that, that, that they'll actually do good CG. Mm -hmm. Well, um, is, is Agretzko, is she, is that CG, isn't it? Is it? Not sure. I think the elements, it is. elements are. Well, I think, I think it's all digitally rendered. Mm. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, it's not sort of yeah. like, uh, reboot where you know it's all like very evidently you know cg but it's all certainly digitally rendered mm -hmm. so they do it at least in that minimum style that's i'm perfectly fine with that it'd be nice to see if it I'm was there with that That'd yeah be i'd say it'd be, be nice to see if it was more than 12 minutes so i i um now i think this is cgi in the like full 3d cgi sense um mm, they worked on could be, could be dodgy <laughs> so they worked on troll hunters along with dream hunters um animation um and other than that i mean apparently they are uh a pretty new company um 2017 ish uh, 2016 i think is around when they, when they got started um i'm not seeing much else uh about them online i will admit uh, which might be one of the reasons why they are um, uh, they are kind of chosen for this. Um, well, this on... this could be one of those moments where they're proving themselves. So they're going to mm -hmm. throw a tremendous amount of great effort at it. Huh? Let's see here, I Please? hope so. I yeah, know. yeah. I, I know. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the things I have a problem with Netflix lately is that they they give us these series, you know, like reboot with the the Ghost in a Shell reboot and mm. stuff like that, and the the new series and the and the animation is you know certain element in certain in certain moments it's it, it works but a, mm. a lot of the time it doesn't and, mm. and so I'm just kind of hoping you know the technology will be better because because you, you know this conversation happened back in the 1970s when they're going we're going to do the animation this way please make it better can you make the animation <laughs> better so the technology will eventually get better so yeah. hopefully it, this will start with this. Totally. Well, again, it just it depends on how much cash Netflix is willing to throw at it. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they throw enough at it, then the minimum technology we have right now should make it fairly decent. Well, if they're willing to throw a lot of money at it, they might be able to get a really good product. Uh, to an extent. I mean, it, it's all about how much skill you have, right? Like, right. So that, that's going to be the interesting question. Um, and what, what intrigues me about this... Next Secura. It could. Um... And that's kind of an interesting question. Is that I, I think the good news is that Usagi Ojimbo is, I think, a good show to to do that with in the sense that, you know, this is not a major beloved property where millions of people are going to be expecting it to be in the next Akira. Um, but mm, it's, it's quirky true. enough and it's different enough that you can play around with it. You can, um, you know, you can take a more... Um, uh, samurai movie take with it. You can be more cartoony if you want to. So you can kind of, you know, whatever you're good at, you can kind of lean it in that direction, hopefully. Mm. Um, who knows or you that? could just totally jump the shark and <laughs> crash and burn. Absolutely. You never know. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff on Netflix that is not the best stuff in the world. No. You know. <laughs> No, but it's content, and they have it on there, so mm -hmm. they can claim as as your little infographic part at the beginning of the mm -hmm. of the stream said, you know, how many shows are on Crunchyroll? It's like, well, how many of them are worth being on Crunchyroll? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's probably more than a handful that are probably like total crap, but yep. they're on there, and that's content. Yep. Which, what's the answer to that? Oh, <laughs> I believe. Um... How many anime are on Crunchyroll? Um, I think it's it is. It's not a thousand. It's got to be six hundred, right? 
Um, I actually, dang it, one second. Um, I had that on a list well, they somewhere. C. <laughs> yeah. C that I'll never get to the end of my queue. So no, 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 no. matter. That's the thing. Um, I have the number on here. Somewhere. It might be over a thousand. Really? Um, wow. I, I can I can find it. One second. I actually have a whole website for this. Uh, Pre Funimation join or post Funimation split? I think just you know, um, um, just as of a particular time. Let's see if these pages load. Because I know um, once Funimation left, things like Ano, not Ano mm. Hana, uh, Iora. Uh, oh God, what the hell's the one Iora? Is she's the working at a, at her grandmother's uh, um, inn, Ryokan. Hanasako Iroha. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Um, that one they pulled. Oh like really? They sent it. They sent a a hot notice that said, "Listen, these are the such and such and such and such that are not going to be a part of our catalog anymore." Mm -hmm. And that was exactly at the time the whole Funimation deal split. Mm -hmm. And that went off to Funimation, and Crunchyroll continued on its own. So, Yep. Why can't I find that number? Um, it was out here somewhere. Um, they're hiding, hiding it. They're hiding it. They don't want us to know. Uh, they made a big deal of it at one point. Um, and again, this may be one of those things where it's, just, it's changed so much. Um, yeah. As of... Here, 2012. <laughs> as no. of as of May 2019, there were 40,000 episodes on Crunchyroll. Wait a minute, yeah. 40,000 episodes or 40,000 series? 40,000 episodes. Episodes. Yes. So of of which 29,000 are uh, all One Piece, One Piece yeah. Naruto, <laughs> and, and Bleach. This is true. This is true. Aha. Uh -huh. um, and so, Gintama. Sorry, mm -hmm. and there's Gintama in there as well. That, that's absolutely true. Um, and I just started watching Ranma one half, oh, and no. apparently yeah. there's 161 yep. of those. So. Yeah, oh, wow. I, yeah, I think I'm like I'm five five episodes in, and I'm like, oh, I could I could be I could like want to see where this goes, and then I saw the absolute <laughs> episode count. I'm like, it's gonna be like it years before I get anywhere, and it's still not gonna end, is it? it, it going i love uh, it i love it dearly but mm. it's going, going. i you another... never get any resolution <laughs> no i can give you some no other other numbers about crunchyroll though um as of may 2019 uh there were two million paying subscribers out of about 50 million registered users okay um and as of a few months before that about 12 million monthly active users so pretty decent numbers there um uh, their estimated monthly revenue as of 2017 was about $7 million uh, a month. Um, and what was it? $7 million a month they were making. Hmm. Okay. Revenue. Uh, let's see here. And then um, the percentage of Crunchyroll subscribers under the age of 35, perhaps not surprisingly, about 75%. Oh. I th actually, I, I thought there'd be more than that. Um the median age of a Crunchyroll free viewer is 18. Um, and the according to Crunchyroll, again, um, as of March 2020, I'm sorry, as of March 2019, pardon me, the percentage of the world's anime that is offered on Crunchyroll, and I think that means the percentage of, of, of well, the percentage of world anime offered on Crunchyroll, they claimed in March 2019 was 90%. I don't believe them. No, I, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I know that's not the case. Uh, um, as I've seen a lot of stuff at a lot of different providers that it's nothing yeah. that's mm -hmm. ever on Crunchyroll. They're prolific, but... Yeah, I, I would assume that is like 90% of what is maybe available streaming at the time? Like, like currently broadcast? I would imagine it's 90% yeah. of what they are allowed to to actually mm. license mm -hmm. so out of the hundred percent of all the licenses that they could acquire mm -hmm. that they are allowed to acquire by providers they have 90 percent of all of the licenses that have that yeah. are available and if this if this was with funimation they that, that's is 90 percent of all of the you know north american anime licenses yeah, yeah that, that would make sense 
Yeah, um, and it's like it's yeah. not that doesn't represent ninety percent of ninety percent of all yeah. of the content. Yeah, no, of everything everywhere. Yeah, no, that's that's no, that's that's ninety percent of of you know Verve and High Dive and Hulu. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is one of those things where it's like you know the Simpsons made a joke about you can make numbers to to mean anything. Three quarters oh, yeah. of all people know that. Right. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, this is one of those things where if somebody came up to Crunchyroll and said, we've got 10 anime, you know, and you're only allowed to license nine of them, mm -hmm. that they could then turn around and say, out of the 100% that we were offered to license, we've we've licensed 90% of them. Mm -hmm. Be like, that's only nine. <laughs> that There's doesn't a... represent global. That just represents what you can get your hands on. <laughs> like, there was a news story when some university, uh, uh, their like math department went co-ed. Uh, there were certain uh, certain professors uh, at the time, like in the '60s, who were very much against this, and so le they leaked a story to the press that um, marriages amongst um, staff members at uh, in the math department had increased 33 percent that year. There were three people working in the math department, and one of them got married. <laughs> yep. <laughs> mm. Facts so, and yeah. figures are freely, <laughs> freely uh, adjustable depending on your perspective. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. All right. I think that handles that. I think we covered that pretty darn well. Just checking the chat here real quick. Um, do, 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 do. Usagi Ujimbo is a very unusual comic, I think. Um, it is trying to be kind of a, a parody of samurai films. Um, it's also very much an indie, indie comic from the 80s. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an acquired taste. It's like a fine wine. Um, you know. If you're a history buff, you'll like, like me. Mm. It's All right. My degrees in, but if you if you're a history buff and you want to know a little bit, just have an idea of feudal Japan. It actually does a pretty good job. Oh, cool! I did not know that. Uh, in, in terms of, as a matter of fact, it, it got um, one or two parents choice uh, parents choice awards uh, because it it showed um, in detail and correctly um, uh, a pottery ritual and a another ritual that i'm blanking on i want to say it's tea ritual tea, bumper, uh, a tea ceremony <laughs> tea ceremony but they they talk but the the series um you know where i got into anime anime my gateway was comic books um <laughs> so when i was reading the comics um it, it's just very interesting they it, even though it is a pair definitely a parody of samurai movies there is a lot of what they talk about they give you a kind of good roundabout idea of what the Bushido code is mm. um, there in terms of like the architecture and what they wore um, mm. was actually pretty close, pretty close, pretty accurate. Wow. That's really cool. I may have to go back to it then. That's cool. And when you talk about pottery, you're talking about the thing where it's like you take broken pottery and you fuse it with gold to bring it like back into shape and mm. emphasize things like it that. And the actual, yeah, the, the, the part of it is that, but I, if I remember correctly, it was actually more along the lines of actually creating, if I remember the storyline correctly, it was creating um, a vase, a sake vase. And mm -hmm. it's, um, there, there is a ceremony behind that. And the sake vase is not just the vase, but it's also the box that you also serve the sake in. Um, mm -hmm. So there's things right. like that. Interesting. Cool. Cool. 